I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. In this video, I'll be using three-quarter ounce SNS John Skinner Bucktails. They're called John Skinner Bucktails because these are the way I like them. Um, they've got hackle feathers, they're a little bulkier, they've got a, a larger profile, and SNS is making them exactly how I like them. They're tipped with um, otter tails, split tails. You're going to see lots of bass in this video, and they're feeding on very tiny bait, uh, these small bay anchovies, so they can be a little challenging even when there's lots of them. Well, one approach in fishing is called match the hatch, where you try to match the bait fish. I'm not even going to attempt that here. Uh, you know, very, very small bay anchovies. You know what? No matter what fish you're feeding on, very often they'll hit a bucktail, and that's the case here. Okay, and if I can draw your attention from the bent rod, if you look in the water to the left there, you just you can see bass swimming by. The water is loaded with them. What's interesting is when you get in a situation where they're just swimming like that, a lot of times they can be difficult uh, to get them to feed because they're just swimming through clouds of bait. When they're really feeding heavily like you see o over there in the corner of the frame, um, yeah, yeah, they're going to hit. I feel like I'm at the aquarium watching all these fish swimming around. It is really fun to watch. And I'm just using a moderate retrieve on that bucktail. Uh, you know, I need to keep it off the bottom. I don't want to drag it. I'm just swimming it through the schools. Okay, the legal size limit is 28 inches. This is definitely beyond 28 inches, and I'm going to catch quite a few in this session that are what would be considered keepers. Um, yeah, I don't eat striped bass uh, hardly at all. Uh, I'd rather eat fluke, so off he goes. So I'm really excited that SNS is making these bucktails um, exactly to my specifications. They actually do a better job than uh, how I tie them or I look at all those fish in the water. Hey, you know what? It should be pretty obvious. If you've got a decent bucktail, you certainly don't need a John Skinner bucktail to catch them in this. But yeah, they, they do a beautiful job of tying these. They hold together well. Um, I'm happy that they're making them because now I don't have to. Um, yeah, J and H tackle Oakdale, Long Island in the store online. I know for sure they have them. Um, and uh, yep, they're going to work out real well here. Something I noticed uh, on, on subsequent trips is I did better on the larger fish by going to a larger profile. And at times, even when I didn't need to, I'd sometimes go up to an ounce and a half, get a real big profile, and, and culled out some bigger fish that way. So um, yeah, you might think about that. And this is October, Eastern Long Island Sound, and uh, this is on the back side of a really strong onshore blow. Uh, the waters tend to stay clear out here, um, <clears throat> even when it blows onshore. It doesn't take long for them to clear out. Uh, I can tell you, I could see that forecast two days out. I told people in work I'm taking that day off. I knew it was going to be good. Um, yeah, uh, it often you often get good fishing on the back side of a blow like that. I'm trying to scare these seagulls away by waving my arms at them to get them out of the way because well, if you cast in there, how do you not have one run into the line? And I don't want to uh, get all tangled up with a seagull, so yeah, I've got them out of the way. I just pulled it right away from those. I could see there weren't any big ones behind it. The rod is a seven and a half foot uh, pen battalion, rated 10 to 17 pound test line. The real is a Pen Clash 4000 and it's spooled with 20 pound test braid. And I have the barb crushed on uh, this bucktail and um, it makes it a little bit easier to, to get the fish off. And you know what? Uh, the hook set's better with the barb crush too. So.
And I'm short casting not only for the obvious reason that the fish are close, but also um, I actually caught a couple of bluefish when I cast it a little further, so um, and they weren't big ones. So I consider those to be pests, and I, I don't want to deal with those. False albacore. Another nice one. So that was pretty cool. Uh, the albies were charging into the, the fish school. They were really close to the beach, so that was fun to watch. So it doesn't show from this camera angle, but the beach has quite a slope to it. That's why the fish just slid right down and into the water. And sometimes it looks like I'm dropping the fish into six inches of water. I'm, I'm definitely not doing that. There's um, there's a little drop off right there as soon as uh, right on the, the edge of the beach. And that's why the fish are often uh, coming in so close too, because you know they have a couple feet of water there. It just doesn't show up much on the camera, maybe because the water's so clear. Ah. I need to be more selective. So there were other times I was able to pull it away from the fish when I saw there were just a few small ones behind it and uh, I just wasn't quick enough that time to quite a small one. Okay, I'll keep this narration sparse from this point on and I'll let you enjoy the action. And thanks for watching. That's why I did not hook them. Put the hook into the strip. Not going to catch them that way. This is as much about catching fish as it is not catching birds. Or vice versa. 